Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about a new direct search method. Um, it's called the golden search method, the golden ratio method. Um, same golden ratio uh, as using the Da Vinci code, uh, if you remember that uh, from a long time ago. And it's something that improves on the dichotomous search method uh, a little bit. So let's get into it. I'm going to share my iPad screen so that I can write. We'll go to the slides here. Okay, so this is the golden search method. So something that you may be thinking about um, since when we started um, direct search methods is that when I first introduced direct search methods, I said that for an interval A, B, you need to evaluate the function at two points in the middle, P and Q. And once you have that, you can either uh, narrow the search interval down to A to Q uh, or P to B. Right, so you don't actually need to evaluate three uh, values like we did in the dichotomous search method. You really, really need two. Um, so if we're trying to make uh, our algorithm more efficient, the first thing that we could do is we could um, try and develop something that uh, uses only two function evaluations rather than three the first time we step through um, the kind of dichotomous search method. The other thing to say is that the dichotomous search always narrows the search interval by a half each time. But there's nothing special about a half. There's no reason why we have to narrow it down by a half. You know, we could come up with some method um, that narrows the search interval by a third or by a quarter uh, or by um, you know, uh, 80, uh, 80 percent um, or whatever we wanted um, each step. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's good to, to think about uh, those sorts of methods and we can derive a method that does that. So one way to write this down is if I don't have to have half of the, half of the interval uh, each time, I can think about narrowing down to a proportion gamma uh, of the interval. And if I make this symmetric, right, so the distance uh, between A and Q is the same as the distance between P and B, uh, then I get these two interior points, P and Q, that are both create intervals that are a proportion gamma uh, of the original interval. So I can write some stuff down. So let's just um, to start off with write down uh, that the distance Q uh, to A, K, is going to be gamma um, of the original width of the interval. So gamma times the original width of the interval B minus A is equal to Q minus A, uh, and the same in the other direction as well. This is symmetric. So BK take away PK is equal to gamma times the same thing, the width of the original interval, b take away a, bk take away a k. Um, so that's, um, that's the first result um, that we can write down and I'll use that again in a sec. So, okay, so that's the idea. And the question here is how do we choose this value gamma? What's a good value of gamma? So gamma can be whatever, uh, whatever we want, but there's something that would be nice to do here, we would like that the next time we run through this iteration, right, we want to do the same trick as we did with the dichotomy search, which is to reuse values that we've already calculated, right? So it'd be really nice if I could reuse that PK, right, the next time. So if I made my next interval, next search interval be that, it'd be near, really nice if I could reuse that point there. So to draw that out in full, if I can, <laughs> Uh, swipe through to the next page, we really want to choose gamma such that those two values are at the same spot, right? And those two locations are the same value. So we want, we write it out, we want for pk to be equal to qk plus one. And if I demand that, that's going to be, uh, uh, going to let me be able to figure out a particular value uh, of gamma here. Okay, so we can write some stuff um, down using that. So I'm gonna write down uh, the same thing uh, in a couple of different ways. So the first thing I'm gonna write down is that if QK, um, QK plus one, sorry, and PK are the same value, then that means that that length there has gotta be the same as that length there. So let's write that out. Um, so QK plus one take away AK plus one that's got to be equal to PK take away AK. Those two widths are the same. And I can write this down. I want to remember, I want to work in gamma here. 
So I can also write this in a different way. Um, that width there is going to be the same as, well, that entire width, uh, take away that width. All right, so let's do that. So that's going to be BK take away AK, right? The width of the entire interval, take away the width of that interval, uh, BK take away PK. And I just said that that's a width, yeah, it's the proportion gamma uh, of the entire width of the interval, the entire length of the interval. So I have that and I can write this as one minus gamma BK take away AK with that. So that's writing out uh, that same thing. So the other thing that I can write down is I can write that uh, this here, uh, that width there is the proportion gamma of the entire width of this interval here. So I can write that uh, the same thing, QK plus one. So that's in your equation one. QK plus one take away AK plus one. That's equal to gamma times the width of BK plus one take away AK plus one. And the width of that interval, you know, that interval is the same as the width of that interval. And the length of that interval is this, gamma BK minus AK. And I'm writing this down in a, this particular way because it's going to let me do some simplifications here. It's got, I've got, now got two equations uh, and I can combine them together, right? So that thing there is exactly the same as that thing there. Right. which means that all these things are equal that I've written down on the page. So in particular, that's the same as that. So one minus gamma, BK minus AK is the same as, now somebody can probably see uh, the thing that I've done wrong here. Um, that's again, that's gonna be a gamma squared there because, um, let me show you my mistake. You know, that BK plus one minus AK plus one, that is the same as gamma times BK minus AK. So there's a gamma there, a gamma coming from that, and that's a gamma squared. Why did I notice that now? I noticed that now because I know that I'm about to end up with a quadratic equation here. So if I cancel out BK minus AK, I can cancel out BK minus AK because BK and AK are not the same point. Otherwise this would be um, an interval of length zero. I now have got gamma squared plus gamma take away one is equal to zero, which is a quadratic equation. Um, you have to solve that. Uh, you know, I'll let you solve that uh, yourself using the, quadratic, using the quadratic formula. Comes out to be that, which is a very special number golden ratio, it's um, 0.61803. And so that um, gives us the, uh, the ratio um, in this golden search method, such that those two points are the same, and I get to keep reusing that point again and again. It's a really nice, that's a really nice method. So we can now uh, turn that, idea into a piece of pseudocode. But just as we did for the dichotomous search, uh, we can do a similar sort of uh, a similar sort of thing here. So let's see, what's this doing? This is encapsulating this algorithm. So you're evaluating these two new points and you use the golden ratio to figure out where the new P and the new Q are. And then you essentially check which of the interior points is the smallest one. Um, and so you can um, and so you can use, you can write that down. The thing that we want to evaluate here is the number of function evaluations, right? So, whoops. so the number of function evaluations when running this, uh, when running this algorithm is, well, it's going to be two, right? Because the first time I run this, I need to evaluate when I initialize, I need to do two function evaluations, calculate f of p and f of q, but then if I'm running through this n, this loop n times, um, then each time I get to, I do that, I get to reuse one of these function values. So every other time uh, I, I run this in the remaining n plus one loops, I only have to evaluate uh, my uh, one new function value. So it's more efficient again. So this comes out to only require n plus one uh, function values.
We can also figure out what n is, just as we could for the dichotomous search. Uh, we could figure out what n is. So I start with an interval that's of length b0 uh, take away a0. And I run this function n times, and each time I shrink um, the interval by some fraction gamma. So after one iteration, I shrink, the, uh, shrink it by gamma. Uh, I shrink it by um, uh, uh, gamma each time I do this. So each time I'm multiplying by gamma, I'm going to do that n times. Right? And I want to keep doing this until that value is less than or equal to my minimum, you know, my maximum tolerance here. And the minimum amount that I um, uh, uh, want to tolerate. And so that means, you know, I can just uh, take logarithms again uh, and say n has got to be the ceiling. Let me write a proper ceiling. So it's log uh, L over B naught minus A naught uh, all over log of gamma. So that's taking a log to the base, uh, a log to the base gamma. Uh, of this thing you're doing a change of base. Yeah, so it's a normal, it's a normal log, there's whatever log you want actually. And you can figure out what that, what that thing is. Um, and so as we'll see, is this ends up being a much more efficient um, algorithm because of this fact um, that you only have to evaluate uh, the function once, you know, either at f of p or f of q uh, every time you uh, run, this, uh, run this algorithm. Uh, again and again and again. By the way, in the notes, that's equation 2.2 um, that's referred to here. Um, that all connects up. Um, so we can talk about when this is and isn't more efficient uh, than the dichotomous search uh, method. Um, but first thing to do is to do some examples, um, which I'll uh, leave you to do, um, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.